It's August 13, 2013. Little Bass comes running from school because he realizes that today is the day. The release of Payday 2. Immediately he's up on his PC, opening up Steam and waiting for the game to download. Little does he know, that would be the game that he would cherish forever. Now here I am, October 4th, 2023, ready to check out the next installment in the Payday franchise. Well, at, at least it's better than Ratfall, <laughs> am I right, guys? Okay, so I kind of wanted to wait until all the dust has settled. The servers are kinda, not really, working fine, and the game has been called a rough diamond a couple of times at least. I wanted my review to be as non-biased as possible. I've played this game for some time now, I've beaten each and every heist there is on overkill, both on stealth and loud, where they're possible of course. So you have to believe me when I say this. This game is fucking dog shit and a disgrace to the Payday legacy as we know it. Let's start with the most important part, style and atmosphere. Payday 2 is far from being perfect, especially after certain recent changes, but it's an extremely fun and complex game and can provide both casual and sweaty playstyle. It also was, dare I say, unique. The word that is so elusive that the majority of companies today are still yet to grasp its meaning. Curious. And this game is no exception. Playing it feels like I'm playing a generic arcade shooter, starting from the visuals and ending with UI and character designs. Hoxton especially, look at how they massacred my boy. The game went from goofy over the top funny to a more cleaned up modern and pristine aesthetic and the comparison the comparison just draws itself seriously, I don't even have to put a joke here really. Perhaps the only good thing atmosphere-wise is the music. Everything else is just gone or coming in the next $20 DLC, which is just what I want when I'm buying a $40 game. Ironic. Charismatic characters are there, but there are so little of them, you barely get a chance to sniff them and instead there is Let's shit. Get you back in the God, I fucking despair. Her. You see, the thing is, Bane is so good, it is impossible to copy him, I get that. The bar of expectations was set pretty high for the narrator, but god, is she not the most insufferable bitch to listen to. You might think this is not a big deal at all, or that I'm nitpicking since internet loves to hate things, but trust me, if I, from here on out, will start narrating my videos like this, when there is absolutely nothing going on, Alright, let's fucking grab ourselves some fucking plague monks and fucking demolish all those fucking elf things. Yeah, let's just fucking build this goddamn piece of shit bastard hell pit abomination containment and bring our fucking piece of shit scaven root to the max. Fuck! It will get annoying pretty quick. She's just really forced to be badass and I do know that this game is feminist to the max and that is why Hoxton looks like a zoomer warjack, but her lines suck, her personality sucks and the worst thing is, she's the only one you can listen to. Remember those cool back and forth banters with Loki and Vlad? Well, forget about it, enjoy Let's getting get back, back in the saddle. saddle! And the cutscenes, oh my god, the cutscenes. Alright guys, we need to get back in the saddle! Uh, but, but, but big yikes, shit, we're like toads broke, like, like we're all out of our gamer gold. Well, don't worry lads, we have a new guy trademark to help us! Oh, bloody bollocks, God save the queen! They also brought back the butcher, 
Uh, why, you may ask? Cause remember Baby 2? The actress has passed, sadly, and this might have been a way to honor her legacy, but just feels like a dumb REMEMBER HER thingy. I really don't like it. Now let's talk about the gameplay itself, and let's start with stealth. If you watched my original video, you know that I despised stealth in Payday 2, the first couple of stealth heights of the game especially, but in this game, stealth is hands down the best thing about it. Too bad it's not rewarding and doing stealth is literally 10 times worse than doing loud. Lemao. There are a lot of improvements to the AI. You can actually destruct guards now with your throwing knives, with lures, hack their radio, it's a lot of good stuff. The stealth in general got a lot more forgiving. Pretty much the majority of heists can be stealthed first try on the lower difficulties if you have a basic understanding of what you're doing. That said, there are a lot of mechanics that are just fucking awful. The first thing that really stands out is the level design. On pretty much every stealth heist, the game will force you to secure bags through a large group of civilians, which just feels so cheap and stupid. Also, some of the heists are just literally a meter by meter box filled with 20 guards, which is always a fucking pleasure to stealth, especially with new Reddit tier objectives. The second problem is the bring four players or die trying approach, which is just infuriating. So stealthing some of the highs is either impossible or excruciating. Let's take this totally not Big Bang heist. This one is supposed to be done completely unmasked, which is kinda cool, don't get me wrong, but doing it solo is close to impossible, as you are supposed to have one masked guy who will cap the camps and guard around the vault, while also securing the hacking process as civilians can spot it and raise an alarm. Too bad I don't have friends don't that are willing to it. spend $40 on a game that is 10% finished. I did do it solo on Overkill, let me tell you, just because it can be done, really doesn't mean that it should. I just took a massive shortcut here by brute forcing the coded lock with an Excel algorithm, uh, cry about it. Art Gallery is the only stealth heist I found to be genuinely good, but then again it is ruined by the level design and this one other mechanic. To secure bags you have to run through a large group of civilians accompanied by a guard. Your only way to secure the bags is to use a zipline that you, by the way, have to buy in the store separately as well as all other assets. You cannot do it in the mission by the way, only out of them, in the very bottom of the store, where absolutely no one would dare to look. Who the fuck makes this shit? And now let's talk about the lead guard. This is by far the worst decision they have ever made in stealth. This guy has completely random pathfinding, just like in that other heist, a cult classic I might add. He can go anywhere, even the areas he literally cannot enter, like the safe house or VIP room. If he catches you, you instantly lose, because he has a looping pager that will trigger every minute or so, and the art gallery takes about 20 minutes to beat solo, so go figure it out yourself. He may even come inside the vault to trigger a search through a locked door. Again, who makes this shit? A neat trick is to put your sneaky camera on top of him, but it really doesn't help the fact that he can trigger a search or catch you in the corner, instantly game over in your run with nothing you can do about him. And you have to move around the map a lot because of the new, fresh, original and truly engaging mechanic. You know it. You love it. The circles. Definitely not stolen from GTA 4. God, this really does tickle boxes, huh? Remember interesting objectives? Remember ramming a car through a wall? Remember timing C4 explosions with the music? Remember running a gauntlet through a skyscraper to fight a boss with flamethrowers? Well, forget about it, as now we have CIRCLES, truly the modern gaming quality we deserve. In stealth they are just as boring as they sound, when you can do them obviously, since most of the time some of the circles are literally inaccessible in stealth or just overlapping with packs of 4 guards and 2 cameras. Again. Who the fuck makes you get back in the saddle like this? Do you know why you have to stand in a circle, by the way? <coughs> Our charmless lady in a pantsuit that never shuts the hell up needs to catch a better Wi-Fi to hack the door. I'm not joking. This game was released in 2023. Jesus fucking Christ. 
the lesbian in the van must be messing with the 5G connection, I'm telling you. Now, let's discuss loud. Objective-wise, loud is no different than stealth. You'll be doing the exact same objectives, but while shooting. And to that one guy, yes, you will be doing circles as well. I've seen people snuffing an insane amount of copium and saying that these objectives are good because they force you out of position and make the team protect one guy standing in a circle. <laughs> First of all, when the objective starts, everyone runs to their own circle, as literally everyone wants to finish this shit ASAP. And secondly, there is no real reason to protect anyone, since you cannot really apply any protection. There is no deployable cover, no buffs, there are smoke nades, but they are a literal scam. Bring back Sicario, please. And second, the game is just way too easy. There is never a need for such advanced team play as covering someone. Don't believe me? Check this out. This is overkill. We're all running around aimlessly with close to no perk synergies and random weapon attachments. And we did not lose once, even when doing this. And if you really want an objective that forces you out of position, introducing a new and fresh, totally new thing called normal objective that forces you out of position. Like in this mission in Vermintide 2, where you have to hold exploding barrels, you really need to protect the guy carrying it, and you simply cannot camp in the corner like you usually do, because the onslaught does not stop. But circles do look more modern with those thin white lines, yup. Now, there are some cool ideas like the AI improvements, enemies actually use cover now and only push you with specials. Also, if you have hostages, they'll use pistols and stun grenades instead of the tear gas. But for my money, people are overrated. Since Shake doesn't give a shit, neither do I. Now, going in and starting killing unarmed civilians is not something I say that you should do. It is something I recommend. Anyway, here is Carrot explaining why the new armor system sucks dick. Hello, Carrot here, self-titled professional Payday 2 player, to talk to you about armor in Payday 3. Or as I like to think of it, Armor 2, I can't believe it's not another health bar. Back in Payday 2, you had a health bar that you protected with your armor. This armor could be broken and fixed in just a couple seconds, which did two things. Always kept you on your toes, and allowed more aggressive play. Knowing that if I drop my guard for even a couple seconds, I could die, makes my brain feel the tension. That tension then converts it to fun, and so I end up watching corners, making sure enemies are dead before I turn away, you know, good gameplay habits that come naturally. Additionally, if I know my armor will break and rebuild fast, I can go do some damage with my armor up, retreat when it goes down, and then rejoin the fight when it's back up. The constant up and down, and then pushing what you can do with it, is what made Payday 2 fun for me. Now let's take a look at the Payday 3 armor system. You get chunks of armor, which rebuild very slowly, but never fully. And once you lose a chunk, it's gone. Hmm, so a bar that goes down and doesn't really come back up. Just like health. The issue with the Death, death by a thousand, thousand cuts, cuts design up. is that I don't give a shit for the first 900 cuts. Sure, I could play super carefully and slowly peek around corners and whatever so that I can take those 900 cuts slower, but first off, that would be lame. If I wanted to peek corners slowly, there are other games for that, so-called tactical shooters. And second off, the damage is still going to be inevitable. Try as you might, eventually your armor will get whittled down to nothing and leave your health exposed. And with your health exposed, the game is basically unplayable on the higher difficulties. If all my efforts will still not matter, then why would I even try in the first place? But how does the health system work with the armor system? The answer to that is quite easy, it doesn't. Since there seems to be little or no damage grace period in Payday 3, losing your armor means you'll be torn to shreds in like 2 seconds. And so the solution is the almighty armor bag. Useless in Payday 2, meta in Payday 3. This bag restores your chunks of armor. Visit one of these every now and then, and there's literally nothing to worry about, even on the highest difficulty. Mio said that the issue is not armor being overpowered, but health not being valuable enough. We have identified what the issue there is. We feel that it's because players don't have enough sources of armor. So we have first aid kits that you can get, which are lesser heals. And we have um, ammo containers and security rooms, which are lesser... Um, armor pickups, but we don't have a source of lesser armor repair, so we are looking into that. We have uh, discussed it internally in design, and we hope to fix it. Um, I don't know at which point, but um, 
We don't think that the issue is with armor being overpowered. Armor is not going to be nerfed, but we will look into ways to make health more valuable. But that's not quite correct. Even though there are these lesser heals on the map, rarely does anyone even go for them. There's usually first aid kits strewn across the floor by the end of the game, and it's because there's no good reason to care about them. Using a first aid kit will allow you to restore some health, an amount of health that'll be torn off you instantly without your armor anyway. Using an armor bag will allow you to restore some armor, and you can see how both of these deployables do the exact same thing. However, armor has inherently more value, since health is completely pointless without armor. And armor is just straight up more durable than what health you can get. There's no reason to ever bring medic bags in Payday 3, because your health bar consists of your armor bar, since the moment your armor runs out, you're basically as good as dead. And if you just convert all the armor you have into health, well, nothing about the game changes. Whether you replace all the health with armor, or all the armor with health, nothing changes. The armor system doesn't work with the health system, it works completely against it. Specking into health is the objectively wrong thing to do when you want to perform well, since what determines performance on higher difficulties is how many armor bags your team brings. If you bring ammo, that's one less armor bag you can bring. If you bring a sentry, that's one less armor bag you can bring. And if you bring a medic bag, well, you're an idiot. All in all, there's nothing wrong with the armor system in Payday 3, it's just a different system from Payday 2. But in the setting of an action shooter, it just happens to be less fun, unbalanced, and provides zero attention to the gameplay. I have no ammo, by the way, which means I am oh, worthless. I Here, go be useful. Okay. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, 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 not, not for you. Bad. Go away, go away, <laughs> not for you. And let it be said, I am fine with the change. If you want to change the core fighting system, I'm cool with that. But why do it in such a terrible way? Since damage is pretty much unavoidable, hiding in the toilet is your only reliable strat to leave the fight untouched. Funny thing is, sometimes it is actually better to go into custody to get free armor, so your downs are pretty much negligible. The less there are, the better. Your team can just sit in the toilet and wait 60 seconds for you to respawn, it's really not a big deal. I just laugh, like, custody is a reward, not a punishment. But I guess you do miss out on 60 seconds of standing in a circle when there is absolutely nothing going on on the screen. Each shootout just feels like it is on a timer, no matter how good you are, if your armor runs out, you lose. That's it. You cannot win with no armor. But guys, don't worry, you can actually use your ultimate ability now. Everyone get hyped. It's just like in that porn game at the Overwatch, I believe it was called. I see you don't have a lifeguard here at your beach. I'm not at the beach, this is a bathtub. It's hot garbage. Right now there are only two weapons in the game, kill yourself in game grenade launcher, WHAT THE FUCK WAS THAT DAMAGE MY GUY? Or the sniper rifle that is way worse than the one you can select normally. Team, I have secured the overkill weapon. Now we'll make Papa Bane proud and win the game. Nice. I paid $40 for this shit. By the way, Overkill, if you want it to be as generic as possible, you can steal God's armor system. It even has a neat little animation. Hire me, Starbreeze, I am available. Anyway, let's briefly run through whole and whopping 8 heists of this wonderful game. Wait, only 8 heists? Jesus Christ, Dark Tide had more. Wait, there's an easter egg in the elevator? <gasps> Another cool and quirky Payday 2 reference, I believe? Uh, perhaps it's an 11th Almir toast on this heist alone? No way! Okay, guys, I was a little conflicted on the subject, but now this game is goated. A seal of approval and a gold sticker from me. Getting back in the saddle is fine, but the escape sequence is kind of meh, B tier. Upwards is a nice heist, the only loud one in the game, so it is the only one where you know what you're getting yourself into. A tier. I can't believe it's not the diamond heist gets C tier because... Definitely not Nightclub gets an A tier, because I found out this gold tag. Art Gallery is easy S tier, if only they knew how to make escapes better. Definitely not Big Ben gets an S, it is hands down the best hide there is right now, if you have a team of at least two. 
99 boxes, easy D tier, one of the worst pieces of dog shit I have ever seen. Not to mention that bots can get stuck in the props, soft locking you because you accidentally gave them the important back. And the only unique heist in the game is easy D tier. It is quite literally one big room filled with enemies and circles, obviously, gotta love those. So that's that. Let's talk weapons and perks now. Weapons are all lackluster and feel the exact same. The only gun that stands out to me is a DMR, but that is only because it is the strongest weapon by far. Every pistol besides the revolver is a pea shooter that is no different than the rest. Seriously, I have tried them all and they are all the exact same, not only by the feel of it, but by the stats too. Perks are its own deal, forget all those complex builds and interesting synergies, as now all perks play around three keywords – Edge, Grit and Rush. Grit is entirely worthless, so forget it exists, unless you're using a shotgun, and shotguns are garbage as well. Rush is only useful in stealth and stealth is boring and unrewarding, so forget about that as well. That only leaves us with Edge, and it is already 66% of our arsenal gone. Yippee! Your Inspire Ace in this game is this shit. Armor back to the max. Since health and downs are useless, and every weapon in the game is ammo efficient, ammo bags are entirely worthless. And don't forget to grab your edge skills to basically never reload and never need any ammo ever. You gain edge by standing still and not doing anything else. You can actually combo this with the circles to gain extra value and start headshotting people which you would do normally. With this you will not only instantly pick up any ammo drop, it also gets added into your magazine directly so you can sit in one corner the entire Heist! Truly a fun experience. Also, some of the more underrated perks features include some incredibly useful effects, such as mark one additional target, and you can even ace that perk to mark an extra target on top of that. Or, if you perform a takedown, which you will never, ever do, all civilians become intimidated in about one centimeter radius around you. Also, an entire perk line dedicated to throwing knives, which are only useful as a distraction tool. And, of course, a perk that marks every single enemy around you when you go down. Truly, a perk that is worth an entire build around it. Bringing anything else than an armor back to a heist is equivalent to a hate crime, so if FBI won't get to you for using a turret or god forbid a funny magic bag, I more certainly will. I am just really glad to see that turrets that were not even good in Payday 2 to begin with got even worse in Payday 3, bravo Vince. Also a turret is not an armor bag, which means I am already in your walls. And now for the last part. Right now I'll prove to you that this game was made by a collective group of five chimpanzees working in a Chinese sweatshop while listening to Blady and communicating specifically in Nordic runes. But how can you speak in Nordic runes? Exactly. To unlock new things you have to level up. How do you do that? Challenges only. You can complete a heist and receive zero XP because this game is stupid. If you think challenges are something special, they are not. Kill people with gun, beat heist 50, hold on, uh, let me repeat that, 50 times and get 150 XP, which is like one tenth of a level up. Run through doors, because why wouldn't you? And of course, you can trade civilians to get a health pack that gives you 1% of your health back. The gaming has truly peaked. Remember when I told you that stealthing is worthless? That's because there's usually only one stealth challenge per heist, meaning you don't get pretty much any XP for stealthing. Also, you don't get a lot of gun XP either, because you're not really shooting much in stealth. Gun XP is just monotonous grinding, and there is no way I'm doing any of that, so I just might or might have not used the infamous XP glitch on 99 boxes. You can call me a cheater, but I have a very witty comeback. Fuck you. Do you think I want to use shitty guns to get all the attachments that serve no purpose besides giving some green and red bars that provide no feedback and are also very inaccurate and also cause the cryptocurrency that is worth a fortune and most definitely will not be a microtransaction in the future. 
Huh? But the best part of playing this game by far is connecting to a public lobby, which is a hard task to do, because 99% of the time it will just be a lobby with you alone, which not a single soul will ever join. And not being able to tell if people are going stealth or loud, because there is no indication anywhere, and most importantly, no. Chat. So you start the heist, everyone is going stealth except for you, and you accidentally sabotage their game because there is no kick function. Because why would you need a kick function? The game is always online to protect us from cheaters, so you wouldn't want to kick anyone ever. So you say fuck it, go play solo, and you realize that you forgot to buy a zipline asset in the store. So you close the heist, buy it, open it again, get back in the saddle, and the servers go down. And now you realize that this game sucks and you go play some Vermintide 2 instead. By the way, this is by far not everything that is wrong with this game, it is only like a tiny fraction of it. I did not even mention bags disappearing when you throw them, or deployables disappearing if they touch any prop that is not a wall. I really want this game to improve and succeed because I love the franchise, despite all of its flaws. And I think it will really come down to the first two DLCs. I really thought that they were testing the waters with Payday 2 DLCs, but alas, no. No cool objectives, no unique enemy designs like marshals or laser shields, and pretty much no unique heists. Which is why I believe the first heist of the DLC will be called Hoxton Breakout 2, where it will turn out that this man is not Hoxton, because, I mean, look at him, how, how could it be him? And we'll have to save the real thing from the lesbian in the van with the help of a charmless lady in a pantsuit that never shuts the hell up, and then, and only then, Bane will come out of the darkness and say, I need my Payday 3, and that will be the moment when Pay will become Day. Check out Carrot, he's a cool guy, he probably will upload his video on Payday 3, or he might have done that already, since I don't know when my video will come out. And don't forget to fucking get back in the fucking saddle!